Glaze time! Today we're going to be going over Jeff Campana's Cone 5-6 Oxidation Gray. I'm actually really excited about this glaze recipe because I've been looking for a gray glaze for quite some time. Now if any of you are here just for the glaze recipe alone, I will post it in the description below. That way you can have the glaze recipe and be on your greedy little way. And for those of you who don't know how to scroll down, I will post it right here as well for your beautiful potter eyes to see. Not only am I giving you this recipe, but we're going to be testing it out on camera today. So I'm going to be doing it on a porcelain test style. I'll be doing it on a red stone or red clay test style. And we'll also be doing it on that good old-fashioned bee mix with grog test style. Because I know most of you homestead potters most likely use bee mix. We're also going to be testing it with a couple bowls and bottles as well. Because half the time whenever I test it on a test style, it doesn't come out as good or as tasty as it would on a bowl or a real product instead. Not only am I testing this glaze on an actual bowl, but I'm also going to be mixing some of the glazes that I keep inside my rotation just to see how it would mix and play along with some of my actual products. I want them to play along real nice with all my other glazes. For those of you who are following along at home, we're only going to be making 30 batches of this today. Every batch is 100 grams, so this is going to be about 3,000 grams. Okay, now we add the water. This is my extremely high-tech water adding device. Cost me millions of dollars. There's probably nobody else who has one of these in the world. This is top tier right here. Also, make sure to rinse off your equipment afterward because we're not lazy savages. Potter tip. Always add less water to your glaze than you think you need. This comes with experience, of course, but I usually like to use a little bit less water in my glaze recipes before I start mixing them together. It's always easier to add more water than it is to distill or evaporate and take away that water at a later time. You see how this glaze is extremely thick? Now I can just add water to it and it'll be fine. Now I don't have to wait an entire day for that water layer to separate from the rest of the glaze body so that I can get that water out and mix it properly later on. Now I can just add water. You see? It's way better now. Now let's sieve it. Oh yeah, look at that. Buttery smooth. Okay, let's do it on the porcelain test style. You guys can most likely see a difference in layering. That's because I like to do my test styles in a couple different layers. This is the first layer of dipping, and right here is the second double dip layer. I like to do this just so I can see the variation of what this glaze can and can't do if I make it a little bit thicker or thinner on what pieces of pottery I have. Okay, this one's the glaze by itself. Here is Randy's red with Jeff Campana's underneath it. Here is Tenmuku gold with Jeff Campana's underneath it. Here is Lumos with Jeff Campana's underneath it. And here's our porcelain, our redstone, and our bee mix with grog bodies, all with Jeff Campana's gray on them. Remember this order because we're gonna be putting them back in the same exact order as you see them right now as soon as they come out of the kiln. I even had time to do a refire with Ron Roy's high gloss black on it. One eternity later. It feels like it's cooled off enough now, so I think we're good. These actually weren't too bad, but let's take a closer look at them. Give me that B mix first right there. This actually came out just fine on B mix. If you can see in the middle right there where there's a little bit of depth and texture, it makes a little bit of a river effect. It looks like this nice blue river. It doesn't do too bad on flat surfaces either with these smooth surfaces. If you can see right here on the first layer, it doesn't really look like anything is there, but there is a layer of glass there. But on the very top layer, you can see where the Jeff Campana's gray really comes in. 
The one thing I will say about this glaze on the B-Mix test style is that I thought it would be Jeff Campana's gray. I thought it'd be a tiny bit darker, but it just kind of seems like a really light blue, to be honest with you. I kind of knew this going in, though, because there's a little bit of cobalt carbonate inside this recipe, and the only thing that I could think otherwise is the fact that there's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of copper inside this recipe as well. So I thought that might make it a tiny bit darker, mixing the blue with the green, but it didn't seem to do all that much. So let's take a look at the red test style. The red test style actually doesn't look all that bad. The one thing I can say is that when I was talking about that green earlier, you can really see it in this test style. Um, I don't know if it's just this clay body. This is Navajo from Amico, but I will say that this is a lot more gritty than I'm used to, although it doesn't have a high amount of grog in this clay. So I don't know if it didn't stick to the body properly. I probably need to test this on a different type of redstone or a red clay body. But this right here, it doesn't look too bad, but it, it does look kind of matte green. If you can see it, it's not all that great. Look at the backside. And the one thing I note about this is that even though it's double layered, I do not see a difference in color at all. You can't even tell where I did one layer versus two layers anymore. This is, this is just straight one layer as far as I'm concerned, even though I know I put two on there. This isn't too impressive, but to be honest with you, I don't think a lot of people use this recipe specifically for a redstone clay. The majority of the times that I see it, it's usually on a porcelain or white clay body. So let's go ahead and move on to that porcelain clay body. That's what I'm talking about. See, this looks a little bit darker. Unlike the B-Mix one, this looks a little bit more clear. It looks a little bit more dark. I will say where it pulled on the top, it looks a tiny bit blue. But look at that. You see that little bit of blackish up there, that blackish gray? That's the color I was looking for. I just wanted a clear version of that. So this is a lot better. This, of course, is on a porcelain clay body. And this one looks a lot better than the B-Mix. I understand now why people mainly use this for porcelain. And if we put the two side by side, you can really see what I was talking about. This one looks a lot more blue than this one does. I wanted a gray. I didn't want a light blue. So on B-Mix, it comes out this strange light blue. Although it is a good glaze, I'll keep it in my rotation most likely, this is what I was really looking for. I was looking for that kind of deep forest clearish gray that I really wanted in the cycle of my rotation of glazes. I really like this one way more than this one. But now I know that if I use it on B-Mix, it's not gonna come out all that bad. I can use it for both now. Now let's take a look at our real products. You see, this one right here came out fantastic. I'm actually really sad that I didn't put any glaze inside of these little etchings right here because this would have been way, way better with some Randy's Red over it. But if you look at this, this came exactly how the other porcelain test style did on that little one. And I usually do some type of bowl or something to make sure that I got a good sample size for my glazes. But this came out exactly how I wanted it to. This came out exactly how I thought it would because that's how the test style came out. So this is fantastic. This, of course, again, is on a porcelain test style and you can again see that kind of pooling inside the texture I noted earlier. You can see that kind of river dark, deep, bluish pooling. And that's the kind of thing that if I saw this at the table, I could pick it up and be like, oh, there's, there's totally cobalt in here without you even telling me the recipe, there's cobalt in here. So this came out just fine. This again is the recipe by itself on a porcelain clay body. It came out fantastic. I'm really happy with this. I'm most likely going to keep this or I might even give it away. Who knows? Now let's check out how it mixes with our Randy's Red. This actually doesn't look too bad at all. This is Jeff Campana's gray underneath Randy's Red. I left a little bit of a pool of Randy's Red down there just to see how it would combine if it was really, really thick on a surface. And this, this doesn't look too bad at all. I like this a lot. I'm really happy to know that this glaze will actually work along with my Cone 56 Oxidation Randy's Red. I don't know if anyone else has ever used this glaze, but this really reminds me of the Cone 56 Oxidation Glaze Hyacinth from Laguna. I think it's an MS glaze, but this is exactly what it looks like. This is what it looks like when I want it to come out on a clay body correctly. Actually, hold on, I think I have a test. Yeah, you see, this is Hyacinth, and this looks like a really light version of what I have in my hand right here. And I don't really mean by color because clearly this is a lighter and different color than this is right here. But what I mean is by the way it melts. It seems to kind of melt in the same opalescent, melty way that this Hyacinth does right here. You really see the comparison in these two right here in that they look like they melted but they stayed stable at the same time. I'm actually really excited at the fact that this works with my Randy's Red because my Randy's Red is one of my favorite glazes. And I like to know that my glazes play along very well with each other. Thank you. 
And you can kind of see right there that I left a layer of it in the middle of the bowl alone. I kind of swished around Randy's red in the middle, and then I did a good old rim dip on the outside. But the inside, the very, very inside middle, didn't really get any attention. So you can really see the difference in between the natural glaze body. So you can really see a difference in between the natural glaze body, the mixture, and the mixture down here. Just to get a good variant of what we're dealing with. Let's take a look at that Tenmoku Gold. This doesn't look too bad. My one issue with this is it looks kind of just like I put Tenmoku over Jeff Campana's gray. And they, they didn't really blend together all that well. One just kind of covered the other. And the other one came out very clear. It looks like they resisted each other pretty well, actually. Now, I didn't really test or put any on the inside. I really didn't want to see that happen. I, I know that my glaze is really, really runny, and I thought it would pull so much that it would mess up the bottom, so I didn't really put any down there. But this is a good chance to see the glaze in all its normal glory. As I said before, this kind of just really looks like a very light blue, even though this is on a porcelain clay body. Maybe next time I make this recipe, I'll put a little tiny bit more copper in there just to make it a little more green, because my favorite test dials that I've seen from his website actually look a little bit more green than this. And if you look right here on the rim, you can kind of see what I was talking about earlier. This glaze didn't really seem to melt together. It didn't form together to make a new glaze or anything. It honestly just looked like it said, ah, I don't like you, you don't like me. Let's just stay in our separate places. So this is not a positive sign, but it's good to know that this won't mess each other up as far as the glaze goes, and it won't become an entirely new monstrous bubbled glaze. They'll probably just sit next to each other and do nothing. Sake bottle. This tester is a little bit special because I put an extra layer of slip on the very top of this sake bottle right here. And the glaze came out just fine on the bottom. You can really see the glaze by itself. But this is it mixed in with my Lumos recipe. I'm actually really happy that this didn't run off the shelf because Lumos is one of my runnier glazes. So now I know if I mix this with a runny glaze, it won't run too much, but I do like this tiny bit of run right here. I'm very happy it didn't run off the kiln shelf or go anywhere off the foot. But dang, this is a really good, good mix. This looks like a super intensified version of the glaze if it was runny. My Lumos, of course, is white and kind of opalescent, and usually I keep it around because whenever I mix it with darker glazes, it makes an entirely new, lighter glaze. And this time, it's no exception, even though this glaze isn't really that dark. As I said before, you can really see the basic glaze right here. There's nothing over this part right here, but you can really see where it came into its own with the Lumos, and it really combined. And this is the kind of thing that I look for whenever I test my glazes. I look for these kind of things where I mix two glazes, and they make a whole new glaze, and then I can write it down and save it for later. Unlike this piece of I will say while this glaze met a lot of my expectations for what it could be or what it could do with my other glazes, I did put it over my Ron Roy's High Gloss Black as a refire and it literally did nothing. There's no glass right here, I re this at cone 5.6, it literally did nothing to the Ron Roy's High Gloss Black. But this of course isn't a refire, this isn't a true mixture of glazes. I just wanted to see if it was strong enough to take over a whole other glaze after one other refiring. So I guess this would be one negative point on its list, is that it doesn't really do that well with a refiring process, especially with Ron Roy's High Gloss Black. We don't know if that's the case with other glazes, we'll have to test that later. Bonus round! Dante, it's already bad enough that you use it on a real product, what else did you use it on? You're not supposed to use new glazes on things until you've tested them first. Just, just shut the f I didn't know what to glaze these two plates right here, so I just dipped them in the new test batch of Jeff Campana's Grey at Cone 6 Oxidation. This is the color that I have been looking for the entire time. This is that blue with a little bit of green that makes a very light gray, and this is how I expect the glaze to come out each and every time. The messed up thing is that this isn't even porcelain. This is actually an amalgamation of B-Mix and my porcelain that I re-wedged as recycled clay. So this technically is an abomination of clay that it worked way better on than the rest of those test styles over there. And it's not like it worked one time, no, no. I have a duplicate plate. It worked two times. I am extremely happy with this glaze. This gives it one extra point in my mind because I know now that if I put it in a certain spot in my kiln or I treat it just well enough, it'll come out just like this. And hopefully you guys can see the difference. This is the glaze by itself with a little bit of underglaze on the top of it. And this is the glaze by itself as well. But this one looks a lot more opalescent on a pure porcelain body than it does with this mixture of porcelain and B-Mix. And then of course the B-Mix test style comes out a little bit more blue than this right here. So this is perfect. I would like this each and every time, please. 
I think we're gonna keep this glaze because it works wonderful by itself. It works pretty well with the combinations of my other glazes that I have going around. And whenever I put it on unexpected recycled clay, it works even far better than it would on a normal porcelain clay body. Altogether, I give this glaze an eight dirty potters out of 10. That's our new ranking system, get used to it. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining us today. Not only do I wanna start giving you guys glaze recipes, I also wanna show you what happens when I use them on different clay bodies. That way you guys don't have to go through all these tests. And if there's any different variations of tests, like holds or anything like that, please post them down in the comments below. I always like to hear about your guys' tests on these glazes as well. But thank you Dirty Potters for joining us today. If you'd like to see any of my artwork, the links are always down below for your beautiful Potter eyes to see. And I will see you Dirty Potters next week. Eight claprons out of ten. Eight dirty silica towels out of ten. Eight guys who don't clean their wheels after using them improperly out of ten. Eight pairs of shoes that have way too much clay on them out of ten.